Even though it's the middle of winter, there's still lots that the land can offer us. So today I'm going to show you how to make an easy tea that's quite delicious and can be used in survival situations. And right here is the main ingredient, a cedar. So we're going to pick a handful of this cedar and put it right into our pot and it's going to flavor our water. So I've got everything I need. Let's make a fire and put the kettle on. This beauty here is a balsam fir, and one way that you can identify it is by looking at the needles. So spruce and pine have uh, cone or cylindrical shaped needles, but if you look at the balsam fir, they have needles that actually lie flat. So if you see flat needles that are squished and a little bit elongated, then this is a balsam. Now if you ever need to make a fire in a hurry, or if you're ever caught in the rain and you only have wet wood and you need to get a fire going, the balsam fir is your best friend. Now, if you look in the trunk here, there's lots of little bumps all the way up and down the trunk. And these bumps are actually filled with sap. And this sap is very flammable. So we're gonna open up a couple of these bumps. We're gonna smear it on a leaf here. Yoink. And then this leaf is gonna help to supercharge our fire starting. Oh, perfect. So this little leaf is going to be really flammable and I'll mix it in with my other kindling and our fire will get going lickety split. Ugh, it's like popping trees it. <laughs> Thank you little tree for your bumpy complexion. Now the cool thing about this is that the bumps are so close to the outside that it's not actually leaving the tree vulnerable to infection and the sap is a natural anti-parasitic that is going to keep the tree safe. Every fire needs kindling. So this is a spruce tree and on it are some lichen and some moss that is called Old Man's Beard and this is a great fire starter. So I've got a nice open spot here where I'm not going to catch on anything else. So I'm going to do a little fire dance. Just flatten down some of this snow. It will actually help to work as a bit of a windbreak too. Great. So our precious flammable leaf, some other kindling. So I'm just making some mid-sized kindling because it's important to build your fire up in stages. If you have a great fire going with your kindling and if you put wood that's too big on, then you're gonna smother everything. So you have to work up the size of your wood. Ancient indigenous technology, the Bic. When you start to hear that crackle, that's when you know you're off to the races. That's the sound of the oxygen burning up inside the wood and that you've got a good combustion happening. And slowly, bigger pieces of wood can get put on. I don't have a grill, so I'm gonna make the fire in a way that it can support a teapot. I'm gonna fill it full of snow, throw in my cedar, and then make a teapot. The great thing about the cedar tree is that its fronds are full of vitamin C and other macronutrients. And there's something nice about a hot drink that even if you're in a survival situation, although it might not offer a lot of calories, there's something warm and soothing about having a warm core and a hot drink. It's got like a mild, sweet, almost jasmine tea kind of uh, flavor. And if you're hiking around in the winter time, if you're drinking cold water, you're actually making your core cool down and that puts you at risk for hypothermia. So if you can replenish with a warm liquid, even better. I'd get lost any day in the bush if it meant I could have fire and some cedar tea. 